If you news the rumors that appeal, welcome to the dust. If you want news the rumors that appeal, welcome to the dust. Hey, welcome back to the Dusty Wheel. I'm your host, The Innkeeper, and this is our live call and talk show all about the Wheel of Time. Tonight, we're talking about the Shadow Rising. Yes, it's that new reader experience bringing us all back to discuss what it was like to read this book for the first time. And to do that with me, shortly I'll introduce the wonderful Wheel of podcast. But before I do that, I want to remind you of what we have coming up next here at the Dusty Wheel. First, this Sunday, we have a unique episode talking all about trauma in the Wheel of Time. Yeah, it's going to be really serious discussing about the real events that happen in the Wheel of Time and how we see that affect our characters and how we also uh, kind of take that into our own lives. And then after that episode, we're going to come back the following Wednesday and talk about VFX with my good friend Lauren from Unraveling the Pattern. Just talking about the processes themselves. I know nothing about VFX, so I can't wait to learn all about it with him. And then the following Thursday, yes, that's right. It's gonna be a Watt Thursday, a little special event that we have, and you might've missed it on Sunday. Brandon Sanderson will be back here live at the Dusty Wheel. In fact, tonight, we're gonna give away questions that you can win as in part of the raffle. You just have to be here on YouTube in our live chat and join the raffle that we begin and we'll give away three of those questions. Basically, this is your guarantee that I'll ask him one of your questions during the live stream on June 17th. That's right, mark your calendars. Brandon will be back with us here at the Dusty Wheel on June 17th. So that's gonna be a blast. I'm glad you're here tonight. And again, though, we're here to talk all about the shadow rising with my wonderful guests this evening. Let me welcome Danny and Brett to the Dusty Wheel. How are you both doing tonight? So good. Good. Excited cheers. to be back. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome to have you. Yeah, cheers. I guess the uh, speed dating went well because we got a second date with you again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. We have to do that speed dating episode again. That was a that, that was, was crazy, wild. but that was, that was a yeah. lot. <laughs> that <laughs> that was... Was... I can't imagine how much work that was for you. <laughs> oh, it was, it was crazy. It was just so much fun. If you don't know what we're talking about, we did an episode where we speed dated, I think, I don't know. It was crazy. Like, 15 to 20 podcasts wheel time podcast it was in uh two hours it was great so go back and watch that if you're curious about wheel of time podcast just like just like these fine uh, people so okay the shadow rising i have a, a variety of ways i want to ask you all sorts of questions about this danny and of course brett i want to get your what your memory is of this book <laughs> i'm just here to listen to what she's saying <laughs> okay 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 i hear that i hear that so let me uh, kick this off for those of you that are watching. And just, with just a reminder, no spoilers here in the show, nor in live chat when it comes to anything past the Shadow Rising. 
uh, try, don't be coy and, uh, you know, whatever, reference some kind of thing that you know, but you're just trying to be, you know, no hinting, about it. No nothing. Yeah, no hinting. No hinting yeah. in chat. Uh, thank you. Thank you for saying that. I'm not going to look at the chat. <laughs> I'll just start like closing yeah. computers at left yeah. and right here. So it's all good. <laughs> So keep your comments with us here in the Shadow Rising. So with that being said, I think the first question has to be, right? When it comes to the Shadow Rising now, I want you to rate it. You've okay. now read four books in the Wheel of Time series, Danny. Oh. Where are you at? Which one's your favorite so far? Okay, the Shadow Rising. That's, your favorite. <laughs> That's, That's a, okay, the Shadow Rising is your favorite? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Huge surprise. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and is that, I mean, for you, Brett, is it the same thing? Is the Shadow Rising st uh, still a favorite or is it the favorite for you? I mean, I, I understand that Shadow Rising is like a lot of people's like top favorite book. Uh, and it's up there. It's up there. But I don't know. I have this big nostalgia factor for book one, Eye of the World, where it's just okay. like every time I reread it, I'm just like launching off again into the series. Yeah. So that one still hits home. But yeah, yeah, yeah. TSR, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's it it certainly is when they put these polls out, whether or not they're on social media or even you know uh, in news, <laughs> whatever uh, on news websites they put these polls out. Shadow Rising definitely wins most of the time as people's favorite, uh, and I think that's that'll come out in our discussion tonight. It's definitely up there for me. The Great Hunt and the Shadow Rising often change positions, and I think it just matters which one, which book have I read most recently. So fair, uh, yeah, totally so, fair. I, uh, yeah, I have a new analogy. It's actually a pretty good one. Sometimes the analogies with her are like <laughs> super hit and miss, but this one actually it makes sense to me. So okay, yeah. So my new analogy is about the book series as a whole, and I'm comparing the book series to a tree. Okay. So books one to three are like the trunk of the tree. And it's all, it's like introduction, limited perspectives, limited storyline, and we're just sort of like getting into it. And then what I found with book four is it starts to branch off. So we yeah. have our characters doing different things. We have them in different places, not all working towards a common goal. And it's starting to become a little more complicated and in my opinion, a little more interesting. And so I... And so I'm looking forward to seeing, I can only imagine when we get like upwards book 10, you know. How big the tree gets. Yeah, yeah. and how convoluted, <laughs> how convoluted with a bajillion characters. So that's my analogy. <laughs> no, that's a good one. And I like how you brought up that it gets more complex. Yes. I think that that for those that are reading up to this point, if you're new readers and you're here with us, I think you likely experienced the same thing. It does get more complex. You thought maybe you had seen all of Robert Jordan's tricks in the first three books, but he clearly had a lot more up his sleeve here as far as where he planned to take the story. So that's, that's what I'm getting excited about discussing. For those of you that are in chat right now, I'm kind of curious. Uh, we'll open up that raffle I mentioned in just a bit after we talk about this next section. So stick with us if you're here to, again, potentially win that question for Brandon. But I'm curious for people that are in chat, just put, type the number of the book. We're, that doesn't spoil anything. I'm just curious, what is your favorite book in the Wheel of Time series? Just put the number in chat. Uh, and again, if you're seeing this over on Twitter, Facebook, that's great. We love having you over there. Uh, feel free to reply, I guess, to the video over there or jump with us over here on YouTube. So while we wait for everyone to kind of throw those in, now I want to move on from rating it. That's just really basic. I just want to understand where you were at. Let's yeah. dig into, I mean, this is an important question. What were you right and what were you wrong about? I know yeah. this is a common experience with all the New Reader podcasts, oh, yes. which makes a lot of sense, which is like, make some predictions. So, so I mean, let me go to Brett first. Brett, do you remember something that Danny was right about or so, something that she was, I guess, wrong about, if you will? Yeah, yeah. So this is the hard part about this question. We do have some examples, but the amount of things that she says... <laughs> Like Can't all the time, oh my God. It it's so funny. I think I'm going to pick this one as my favorite back and forth we had in the entire series was, and I can talk about book four openly. Oh, right? yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, all book four. Yeah. 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 When, when we meet the peddlers in the waste and Keely is a point of contention on who Keely is. And the amount of times there was like a flip flop back and forth, back and forth. Who's who? Are they all just like everybody's a forsaken? Nobody's forsaken. <laughs> Ely's Lanfear. Nobody's Lanfear. Everybody's, everybody's Lanfear. Everybody's Lanfear separately. Yeah. Everyone's just like in a trench coat. <laughs> so I think that that was one of my favorite 
you know, I don't know how many chapters it was, like 10 chapters just so in many. a row of just, you know, trying to figure out who's who. Yeah. In our last episode of The Shadow Rising, yeah. when we get like some the big like reveal, the big reveal about who's who. And I went back and listened to every episode we had and tracked <laughs> every time I said, because I wanted to be like, I was right. But I knew I flip flopped so many times. So that- she gets in. She was right. <laughs> and she was wrong. Yeah. All in the same prediction. Right. So it was great. <laughs> I was a hundred percent that Keely was Lanfear. I just didn't know if like everyone yeah. else was also somehow Lanfear <laughs> or. <laughs> I love that idea. Oh, that everyone is Lanfear. Was... Look, that appeals to me. That, yeah. that is uh, that will be the statement I take. I mean, we're going to talk for another whatever, you know, hour and 20 minutes. But everyone is Lanfear is 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 yeah. a great way to think about the Wheel of Time. Everyone. That's true. And you Everyone. never know. And it very well could have been. So. <laughs> so I love that you were right and wrong and right and wrong about the same things over and over again. Yeah. Is there one that stands out to you that you thought, you know, whatever for the, for, through the first three books and you held on to, but you turned out to be wrong about this book in some way that you can remember? Ooh. That she turned to be wrong about. That's tough. Yeah. So that I turned out to be wrong about in this book? Yeah. Is there something that, you like something that I turned out to be right about in That's this true. book yeah. that yeah, I yeah. <laughs> had been talking about? Oh, okay. Not, yeah. Do that one. Go ahead. Can and I talk one. about Because yeah, I know yeah. for sure, because I like to talk, like think about this a lot. Yeah. <laughs> about, like, being right. But uh, the fact that Tigraine or Tigraine, whatever, is Rand's mother. And nice. I've been talking about that since like early in like book three. Yeah. Right from the get go. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Maybe yeah. even as early Maybe as book two. I can't remember. That. But yeah. Yeah. Doesn't that feel and then good? Like, but she's supposed to be a maiden, and I was like, "Well, maybe." T. Grant just became a maiden, and I said that so long ago. Yeah. And it got revealed this book, and I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> That's first of all, that feels awesome to, to like. I don't know. It feels like almost like winning, yeah. and you, the 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 battle is between you and Robert Jordan. You know, you're like reading it, and you're like, "What are you trying to trick me on?" You know, and you almost feel like you got one over on him. But trust me, he ends up winning out more, more yeah. often and than not. And the whole like Luke and Esam stuff, like that was a whole nother just roller coaster of emotion back and yeah. forth, uh, back and forth. So, why, yeah. yeah, I was pretty sure they were the same person. Yeah, she was right about that, but she yeah. just not not it in just, the sense of how. Well, and you it's made me convoluted. go back and do a bunch of homework yeah. on my Malkier history. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> turns out she's not well versed in like <laughs> we yes. all time history. Which yeah. is what? Pointing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So does now tell me this, Danny, does Brett have a tell? So I'm sure he tries to like, <sighs> you know, mislead you. Have you been able to figure out like, do you look for something when you say something to him and how he reacts to you? Is there a thing that he does? Yeah. So <laughs> she he, has no idea what it is, though. <laughs> I think um, lately, I think that whenever I say a prediction, he'll say it almost back to me really sarcastic. He'll be like, you think keely is lanfear he, he that is it. not what i sound no, I know, like no it is <laughs> he, he, like whatever i say whatever i predict he'll always just turn it back on me and not yeah. say give anything away and yeah i don't know yeah the trick i've, I've kind of like figured out a bit of a system where you have to play both sides of the board you can't right. confirm, you can't deny. So you can either go with her theory or you can come up with an alternate theory yeah. and try and rationalize all sides of it. Because there are some times when he completely agrees with me when I'm wrong completely. But then there are other times he completely agrees with me when I'm right. So I think that his, yeah, I, I don't, if there's a tell, I haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. Okay. She's really good at formulating like logically like sound arguments for why things might be a certain way. So mm-hmm. if she's good on that side, then I'll go with it. Yeah. Do you want to mm-hmm. hear something that I really got wrong? And, oh, I, yeah. and it was in the moment <laughs> I predicted it and it was like revealed yeah. not far <laughs> later. But so at the very end, when Kuladin reveals his dragons, yeah, I didn't understand what was happening. And which is like, the end of a wheel of time book so of course a first time reader has no idea what's going on that's like the that's the signature overall that i've picked up on but so rand makes it rain and i thought for sure kuladin had drawn these dragons on somehow like magic marker style yeah i really, I really <laughs> didn't know and i thought i was like a hundred percent that rand was going to get back and the rain would have like washed his dragons off <laughs> <laughs> and that would be the like, and I, I was <laughs> so, so, so sure. I was like, yeah, that makes such sense. This is, he's going to be revealed as a phony. And 
<laughs> not the case. Yeah, that was one of the, that was really funny. That was yeah. good. That's a that's a good one, and I like yeah. that that was like within the you know just the context of what you were reading in that moment. So that's a good yeah. one to have. I, I, I again, it's honestly from my experience, you're you're going to be wrong more than you're right in these books. Now, again, the the new reader experience that that podcasts take, like your own, is a little bit different in that because you are examining. As you go, my daughter just started reading. She's in The Great Hunt and she will fly through, right? Oh. Because, yeah, it's like fly through like 10 chapters and I'll ask her a question and she'll say like, I don't I don't remember that part. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I know. I don't remember that part either because you're not being asked questions about it as you go. You're just like as far as you go and then you just kind of have some some opinions. But I have asked her to start writing things down because her takes are pretty funny uh, about what she cares about, what she doesn't. So... Okay, so right and wrong. Does anything else come to mind before we move on to our next category? Mm, I would say almost from the beginning when we learned Ran Kachanel and he was going to go crazy and right from the first book when Beelzeman was like, you need someone to teach you. And Maureen yeah, was like, you need someone guy. to teach you. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, Ran really needs someone to teach him. <laughs> and I, I like, I, I, my original theory was the heroes of the horn we're like gonna come back and one of them maybe could channel okay and i like that again that logic it makes sense that's a, so that's like, a great like theory maybe yeah. someone like that's that <laughs> and then into this book like right at the beginning when like landfear shows up then she's like oh if you work with me i know i can get someone to help you learn and i was like yes this is what needs to happen he needs to learn and brett was like he needs to learn from a forsaken that's crazy and i was like no he just has to pretend to be on the dark side and then he's gonna learn and then turn on them and so that was wild but then sort of in the end yeah he got a he got a forsaken teacher so a little bit so <laughs> i I uh, I love the theory, by the way, the idea of the heroes of the horn coming back and being like his teacher. I that is a great theory. Yeah, I, I really I thought still, that from the beginning, and I'm still not 100. percent One of the off things that, that yeah, yeah, I like it. Segment. I, like I think it. one of my favorite things she got wrong was she was under the assumption because you kind of start to get the impression that the heroes are in and around uh, Teleran oh, Riyadh. Yeah, I so thought they lived in Ruidian. She, she thought that Ruidian. Nice. I like that one. Essentially, <laughs> Olympic good. Village. Yeah, that's what I called <laughs> where it. they all hung out. <laughs> yeah, and it's that like, is it so good. Sense because oh you gosh. can't go there in Teleran Riyadh. And so I thought yeah. they lived there. It was like that's their home. They lived there, but again, that's where they're kept. Hilarious. Yeah. I, first of all, that is awesome. Yeah. Tele- like <laughs> Ruidian uh, uh, as the. Uh, as the Olympic Village, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. heroes of the horde. That's where all the I, top I lo- athletes go. I freaking love that. That's so great. Uh, okay, so uh, <laughs> we're going to take a little pause here, just to remind you that if you are here with us, please do like this video so other fans can come experience this with us. It wasn't a Watt Wednesday full of Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime news, so come console your sorrows. So we've got negative news talking all about one of our favorite books, The Shadow Rising. And uh, if you are here for the first time and you're enjoying this live Wheel of Time content, please do subscribe. We love having fans with us here at the Dusty Wheel. Taylor's going to add a raffle into live chat. If you want to ask Brandon Sanderson a question during the live stream, you go ahead and join this raffle, and we're going to pick three winners tonight. I'm going to pick some winners next Wednesday. I'm going to do some social media stuff also. Um, and you'll see that show up here in chat. We'll probably close that out in about 30 or 40 minutes, and then we'll pick some winners at the end. You have to be here in order to win one of those. Uh, unfortunately, if we call for you and you don't respond and you don't show up later and tell me about it, then we'll just give away those to somebody else. So Too bad, so sad. Yeah, too bad, so sad. So Taylor's going to add that here into live chat. Unfortunately, if you're watching this on Twitter and on Facebook, you won't be able to join. You've got to come over here on YouTube. Just look up the Dusty Wheel. You'll find us. Jump in here with us live. Okay. Yes, Taylor, go ahead. Oh, Taylor's got a... Do you want me to... An accidental thing? Okay. There may be an accidental thing that shows up in chat, apparently. Uh, so we'll, we'll find out whatever that is. So uh, Taylor's working on that. Let's jump to this new topic, uh, which is kind of a natural place that we went from this idea of right and wrong. It is new, notable, and shocking. So many new, notable, and shocking things, I think, wow. happen in this book. Yes. So I want to go to you, Danny. What were your favorite kind of new things, notable things, shocking okay. things that happened? Let me tell you. This is a big book. The most shocking book. thing is that Elaine and Nynaeve 
do something to prove their competence. <laughs> wow. Oh, that is not... <laughs> That's not what you thought was going to happen. <laughs> I, I, did, well, I did not think that that's the first thing. It was shocking. Yeah. <laughs> Elaine, I got to write this one down. Elaine and Nynaeve yeah. prove their competence. Yes, is, they did okay. something worthwhile wow. and fantastic. Yeah. Well, it it's funny awesome. because we got like books and books of I've them been getting waiting for them. kidnapped, captured, oh. kidnapped, captured, saved, not saved, terrible. Yeah. And then finally at the end of Shadow Rising, they do something they on do their it for own themselves. and it's awesome. Yeah. I love I, it. It's what we I love it. No, I mean, I, I love everything around that. It. So it, it, when you say that you're talking about everything that happens, um, basically with Mulgedian and, and you know, the, the bracelets and everything like that. So, yes. uh, what, so that in and of itself, what was the part about that? That was the most shocking to you other than they just showed their competence. Right. Was there anything so that the kind of surprised shocking, you? I think, yeah. yeah. So we know, like we've been told how strong Nynaeve is or how strong she yeah. can be, but the most shocking is like, she met Mogedian strength for strength. Yeah. Yeah, she went toe and then to toe. outwitted yeah. her. Like yeah. it was just a phenomenal sequence. And I am somebody who, you know, I'm not a big naive fan, and I get a lot of hate for it. But it was very impressive. And like she went up 18 notches in my book, and I was just super impressed with naive as a whole in that. Yeah, scene. and even just the entire arc of them in Tanchico, it's like they went in by themselves essentially got the help they needed from the people they needed it from, but then did everything themselves. They saved the people they needed to save. They got the stuff they needed to get. To be fair. Yeah. There, there were there some, some missteps. Help. There were some missteps. There were some there missteps, some missteps like trusting a random Sean Chen lady. That wasn't a miss. That was perfect. It that ended was good. up fine yeah. for them. But like that, oh, oh, some random lady who just beat up some thugs for us. It's good. Want to come back to my room for tea? Like what? Yeah. <laughs> then... <laughs> Okay, but some people are calling out this from the Great Hunt. They said, "What about the end of the Great Hunt for, you know, for Nynaeve and, and Elaine? Like, would what you give do? them?" What was the end of the Great Hunt? <laughs> Saved Egwene. They they came in, yeah, with the with escaped the... essentially from. Oh Palma. yes, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Okay. It's just that they had a bu- they had a bunch of missteps, like getting kidnapped and then saved by the Aiel, and then they got they basically walked into the trap. Yeah, and Min, Nynaeve, and Elaine did rescue yeah. Wayne. That was good. Okay. That was good. I you okay. don't want yeah. to forget about that. <laughs> you I know. Big, big, yeah, you just I saw people in chat that were like, what? Yeah. They were like, No, the I'm glad hunt. people pointed that out because <laughs> yeah. I feel like that was the first like, oh yes. And then the Dragon Reborn happens and they do so many annoying dumb things <laughs> that you forget that they did anything like that. They didn't learn any lessons from that. And yeah. then anyway. Yeah, so yeah, that no, was that, good. It's like a, that was a good one, yeah. And like you said, I think that was one of the most um, interesting ideas of Nynaeve and showing just how powerful she was. Yes. That all of a sudden Mogedian was, they were, they were, you know, uh, basically showing that they're just as capable. If not, she was more capable than her. So, yeah, especially uh, since she's untrained and there's a whole, yeah. like, is she going to get even stronger now? If so. she can, like, get right. past her issues. Her issues, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was that was a really good one. Anything else that you kind of found? Uh, because this topic is there's so many things that happen. What else to you was kind of just new, exciting, shocking, or notable? Yeah. So new is we went back to the two rivers, right? For the first time since the Eye of the World. How did that like, feel? Yeah. Oh, were you excited? Were you excited when that happened? I was pretty excited. Yeah. I'd say I was okay, excited. About the only that. the only reason she's hesitating is because it's Perrin, yeah. and there's a big <laughs> asterisk beside Perrin. <laughs> gotcha. You're but like as exciting as Perrin can get. Yeah. I gotcha. As exciting as Perrin can get, it was exciting. Yes. <laughs> it, it was You're notable. Just by how much she likes Perrin. That's the. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so great! It was as notable as Perrin could get. It was yeah. as shocking as Perrin could get. I yeah. gotcha. <laughs> I was I was interested to get back. To yeah. see what was going on there. That yeah. was good because that was something I was definitely waiting for, especially when I think it was the Dragon Reborn when we got a little bit of a note that Tam and Matt's dad, name Abel, Abel went to Tarvalin. Yeah. And we didn't see any of that journey. Yeah. And I thought maybe at some point we'd run into them or whatever. And then yeah. I liked getting back to the two rivers and finding all that stuff out. One of my favorite things I was able to do in the Shadow Rising was I was finally able to compare Fael to Gandalf. I did it. Everyone hated it. Fael to Gandalf? It was fantastic. 
Wow. I'll tell you why, because we lost, at the ba- <laughs> we lost, definitely <laughs> lost a lot of fans there, but at the battle of the two rivers, who leaves the essentially like abandons the, the fortress to leave, get an army and come back and save the day. Okay. Wow. Yeah, okay. It's the, same sure. thing as Helm's Deep. It's the exact same thing. <laughs> yes. I, I did not see that Robert Jordan was really making Fail Gandalf. And that does change things for me. <laughs> I'm glad I convinced you. <laughs> Thank you. Way to go. Now we're yeah. never going to be invited. No, back never again, again yeah. but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love that Jenny said you lost, you lost important. Yeah. Like half the like, fan base. No, it, it was bad. I hate that so much. <laughs> I love it. Fail Elaine and I need to prove their competence. Fail becomes Gandalf. It's this a good a, book. So far, this is I can see why you've all loved this so much. Okay, so okay, we're here in the two rivers though. We can't leave here. Anything else here that you enjoyed? Like what happened there? Anything else that you remember? Either f- favorite or least favorite, if you will, kind of. Right. So from... I really do like the little snippet of information about the weird snake and fox people. That we get from a parent dream that happens in the Shadow Rising. The Tower of Genja. That's what it's called. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And so that's yeah. that was really interesting. That was where we first meet Brigida. Yeah. That's where we first talked to her. Or what's her name? Yeah. Brigida. Yeah. Brigida. Yeah. 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 So that so you... was really cool. She's like easily one of my favorite characters, turns out. So Yeah, I... if if I had to say Teleronria does play like a huge role in this book. The whole obviously. book. Yeah. 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 The whole book. Yeah. Right. And so that, <laughs> the fact that you, the newness of, oh yeah, all of a sudden, yeah, Brigitte, uh, you know, the Tower of Genji, you know, you're Roydian, but in Teleron Riot, you know, all these other things of like, wait a second, like, this, this is, is actually whole, like a yeah. really important part Egwene of the book. Egwene just goes yeah. like flying around Tanchico. Like, it's great. It's why fantastic. Not? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I, I, I agree that that, some of those scenes, just this idea of Perrin, going into Teleron Riyadh and engaging with it more is, yeah, yeah it, it's definitely a highlight of the book. It, like you said, it adds complexity. And maybe that's what could be said is Teleron Riyadh adds a super huge layer of complexity yes. to the entire world now. Um, you know, when you just think of, yeah, when you think of everything in this book that takes well, place Well, it's there. how Nynaeve found out about the Panarch and what the Black Aja are looking for. Mm-hmm. It's how Egwene goes to meet with the wise ones to go to dream school it's yeah. because she like runs into any yeah. spy accident yeah. like <laughs> yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of things for that so yeah. it's kind of funny because i think one of the first books it was when we first entered the portal stones back at the beginning of the series the portal stones and Teleran Riyadh and the way like it's all these just like different elements it adds the level of like sci-fi to the fantasy yeah. to just like drag you in a little bit deeper to like so, alternate realities. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, and that's, what's interesting too, right? You still have the portal, you have portal stones here, you have the ways and now you have Teleron Riyadh, right? You have all of these places that are coming back to play in this book uh, in big ways, right? Like important ways. So yeah, yeah I, I'm kind of curious for those in chat. I want to know if you're here in live chat, obviously anywhere on social media, you're watching this, but here in, on YouTube, if you, Throw in here what you're the newest thing, the, the new thing that happened in Shadow Rising that it's the most notable or more shocking to you. I'm kind of curious what chat will tell us the answer to that. Yeah, go I ahead. Remember something. Yeah. It's Swan gets deposed and stilled. <laughs> that, it's ridiculous. Let's just all be honest here. When you start yeah. laying out everything that happens in this book, it's almost like you take the Dragon Reborn, everything yeah. that didn't happen. Yeah. Right. And then you took all the things that could have happened as in like big things and smashed them into one book. Yes. You haven't even talked about the Wayback Machine to find out everything about the Aeol. Oh, right. Like we haven't even talked about that yet. And we haven't gotten there. We'll get there. We'll get there. There's like a whole segment just for that probably. (laughs) Yeah, I've seen, yeah. Uh, yeah, Lord Lord Golden Eyes. Yeah. Uh, the 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 Roydian rings, Aeol history. Yeah, the tower break, nine even Mog- Mogedian. Yeah, that's a yeah. Oh my gosh. And okay. I mean, I picked my I pick my favorite chapters for every book, and then my favorite chapter for this book was Homecoming, when we find the very real scene of Perrin coming home to a not so happy scene of his family. Right. So that was yeah. my favorite chapter of the entire book that I picked. Yeah. So so I, I want to like switch that question then that new, exciting, shocking uh, a little bit and say, you know, did you have any? I mean, there's there's a lot of emotional moments in this book. Uh, did you shed a tear for the Battle of Two Rivers? 
you know, was that, did, or was it, were you just excited by, like, when, how yeah. did, what did you think about the Battle of Two Rivers? Were you just like, let's get out of here and let me get back to, <laughs> this is Perrin related, I don't care. Yeah, I thought, I really liked the Battle of Two Rivers. I, I did think it was good. I loved how everyone, you know, except for the butthole white cloaks, everyone came together and like, that was really great. And, you know, Watch Hill and Devon Ride showing up. Um, I just thought the progression of the Trollocs attacking, it never seemed very serious. Like I never really, I know that when we got to the Battle of Two Rivers and it was like, okay, now we're all going to die. But I never felt like the rest of it was, they were in any sort of peril. Like when yeah. Perrin went and rescued the prisoners and then they went Trolloc hunting. And then it was definitely Lord Luke who like messed up their, um, hunting the Trollocs situation. All that stuff, yeah. All that stuff. I don't know. I just never got this, like, sense of doom. It yeah. was very, almost predictable. Like, I never thought that the Two Rivers and Perrin, like, I didn't think Perrin was going to die here. I didn't think the Two Rivers was about, or, like, Emmonsfield was about to get wiped out. The, yeah. At no point, I, it was like, okay, how are they going to save themselves? That's what I was reading for, because I didn't yeah. believe that it was actually going to get wiped out. Now, Does that do make think, sense? Yeah, I'm kind of curious. Do you think that, that was because you know that there's lots more, there's many, many more books to come? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, this isn't yeah. the end because there's so many other books right. that we still have to read. Is that is that in part, or did you feel like, no, the way he was writing it was like, Emma's Field was never in danger. That's not what this is about, you know? That's a good point. It is a good point because as we were reading them way back in the day when there was only book four that was out and you're like, I don't know how long the series is going to be. It is totally possible that you lose some main characters early on in the series. Yeah, I think Game of Thrones ruined it for a few people where it's That's like, true. now we want our main characters to get killed immediately. Yeah, otherwise it's not exciting. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, yeah, there's yeah, very right. few stories that that actually happens because like, why would you kill off your main characters right away? So yeah, no, it's yeah. true. Yeah, I just kind of, when you were talking about it, I was like, oh man, I, yeah, when I, when I read The Shadow Rising for the first time, it was when there were no other books after it. And so I think things felt no more like on an edge, you know, like yeah. anything That's could fair. happen, you know. Um, yeah, I know there are 10 more books. And like, <laughs> right, are they right, really right. going to wipe out Emmons Field here? Everyone sure. we know and love? Yeah, yeah, just the Terran fairy folk and, you know, <laughs> screw those guys anyways. So oh, yeah, they did matter. get wiped out. <laughs> <laughs> they all got murdered like immediately and no yeah. one cared. <laughs> Shoot, okay, well, let's see. Well, I wanted, I wanted this in the same area. It's kind of a version of this same question which is uh the good and the bad uh your favorites it can be still be like shocking things that happen new things that happen but what were your favorite parts of the shadow rising right so obviously I... not parent so <laughs> i mean like no he's not at the top but he's also not the worst yeah like I liked the battle. Like it was good. Yeah, Perrin's but, getting better. Perrin is getting progressively better. And I really better. loved that whole, like yeah. the whole Luke Esam reveal. Mm. That took was, a long time uh, to get it. It took there. a long time, but like <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, and I thought that was great. Yeah, I have to say, obviously the Mogedian showdown. Yep. And yep. Elaine being Top tier. more assertive, and I like that very much. And then you, obviously did you love the, the Elaine Kooligan. Rand thing. La Elaine Rand was that Elaine Rand. I'm okay beginning. with Yeah, you're okay with it? That's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I yeah. think that Rand could, you know, do some loosening up, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Like she that. seems to be, like, pretty good for him. Okay. Like, helping him, like, lead and stuff. Yeah, she does good things. Like It's not the yeah. worst relationship. It's not, like, parent and Fail, so <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay, so I like uh, you, uh, sorry, you brought up the Mogedian piece. Yeah. yeah. What else What else were your favorites as part of the book? Okay, so the Cool It In reveal. Yeah, that yeah. was big. His I was. Plan. I thought that he was just gonna go there to be like, "This guy's the worst. Let's kill him." Like I thought mm -hmm. that that was gonna be his plan, and then his whole plan showing up at the boss meeting. Yep. At dawn. Yep. To be like, didn't I? <laughs> didn't I come here at dawn? Check it out. Whoa, right. <laughs> and so, like that whole thing was so great. And then the battle with Asmodian was so great. Any time that Lanfear is anywhere. So her favorite so character is currently Lanfear and has been for a long time. Wow. Not sure whose yeah. side she's really on right <laughs> now. But. It's very irresponsible. It's so Team smart. Lanfear. So smart. Um, yeah. Very smart of you. That's a, that's a That shows that you're really paying attention. 
Thank That's you. What that yeah. we should, we're supposed to be rooting for her to win. I actually. She has the best plan of anybody. I don't know why we have to root against them just because they're evil. Like, yeah. Some of the yeah. good people are. I just want to remake the world in my image and then conquer everything with my lover I'm who rooting, doesn't love me. I'm rooting for it. Crazy ex girlfriend. It's great. I'd but. like that you're rooting for. This is awesome. Uh, that you're not that enchanted by Perrin Fayil, that you're questioning the competence of Elaine and Nynaeve, and that you recognize the brilliance of Lanfear. Lanfear so far, you've kicked this thing out Lorraine, of the park. You know, this is good. Brigida. Like, <laughs> I love these, like, strong... I, like, I really like Min. Like, Min saving Swan. That was great. I don't know. There's a yeah. lot of pieces here. Yeah, there's so many things that happen. Um, can we give a little shout-out to tell Gawain to go F off? Oh yeah, Gawain. Because he may, may have <laughs> may or may not have allegedly murdered a few of his mentors. Yeah, that was a sore sore like, point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Gawain. Gawain. Yeah. I yeah, I Gawain. I like Gawain less than I like Elida. Does that yeah. make sense? <laughs> less. Yes, that makes sense to a lot of people. Um, yeah. That's not I a surprise. I don't hate no. Elida. Yeah, yeah. I know that it's written doesn't. like we're supposed to hate her, but I understand where she's coming from. Yeah. Like I get it. I get that she's dedicated her whole life to one thing. And if we that open she it up, is right. let's be real here. Swan and Moraine aren't being the best people they should be being right now. They've made bad decisions. They've left everybody in the dark a little bit too long. And now it's, you know, finally biting them in the butt. So yeah. I like it. I like it. What else? Uh, so how about uh, least favorite parts of this book? Is Did you have ones where you're just like, um, like, no. I didn't really yeah. like this. I didn't care for this. Well, I had one in my mind, and then I started thinking about other things. You go first. Yeah, what do you... Honestly, yeah, there's you're not the... a lot to not like in Shadow Rising. Like, there's so much stuff that's just, like, packed in so tightly to this book. And I think that's why it's a lot of people's favorites is because it does open up the big, oh, wide world. I know so. what I hated. Okay. <laughs> it was Fael tricking Loyal... Oh, yeah, that was bad. ...into going through the ways. Yeah. Yeah. That pissed me right off. Yeah, Gandalf's, think- Gandalf's a jerk, you know? Let's be honest. We always knew that. He totally yeah. dishes Fahil Fahil the Grey. It's, it's, it's yeah. like, come on. <laughs> Fael the Grey is, is what we think. Just yeah. as yes. bad. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like that. Um, I actually didn't really care for any of the scenes in the redstone door frames. Okay. Like in the Terangrials. I found them a little bit confusing. Okay. And it annoyed me how irresponsible Matt was being. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in Ruidian, where he's like, ah, I got to go talk to those guys. And he just like storms in there. It's like, no. I, he does make bad like, decisions. <laughs> I just like that it's four books into this book and you're like, this still irritates me how irresponsible Matt is. <laughs> yeah. <great."> and normally, <laughs> like, I'm such, I'm a pro Matt person. Like, Matt, it has been my boy from the beginning. And the Dragon Reborn was Matt's book. Matt got healed. He did so many good things. He went to Camelin. He went and rescued the girls. And he, oh man, did he ever shine? He got his like luck power. And then this book, Matt does not shine. He becomes like the broody sidekick. Yeah. I don't know. But I mean, that's literally his his story arc is that he's following and he's just doing what he was told he has to do to survive, which is go to Ruidian. And then he does that. And now it's like, what do I do now? So he's got to come out of his shell again. He's definitely a side side character in this Hmm. book. Yeah. I think the brooding sidekick is a... That's a that's a good way to say. It. I, I like taking these down because I that's a great. I am personally offended though that you said you don't like the the doorway scenes. Oh yeah. <laughs> look, look, that's where we kind of parted ways a little bit. Yeah, it's like we're but just off a, on different tracks. You probably, that. if you were watching, you probably saw like a little like I, yeah, uh, my excitement about like just how much Danny and I were communing in this book came down a little bit. But I get it. It was just as it. a first time reader, I had no <laughs> idea what was happening and all the things he was like yelling and the answers he was getting it is very convoluted i I understand it's foreshadowing i understand that it's important but it means nothing to me sure and it's confusing and i mean we even get the names that there's like the eelfin and the alefin and however you want to pronounce them but we still don't know which is which and we don't know what (laughs) oh man okay so that's gonna be but we haven't got an answer so yeah Hmm. yeah i like it yeah. So yeah, that's I thought I like that you brought that one. We haven't tackled a particular topic of this book too much, so I want to dive into it. Yeah. The Aiel. Yeah. Let's right? do that's it. Obviously, like a huge, the wise favorite? ones. Uh, 
the Aeon themselves, not necessarily, but everything having to do with Teleron Riyadh and Roidian and, uh, you know, Terang Real. That's all my favorite. And they yeah. just happen to have a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so so I do commune with the Aeon a bit in my head. I love um, the Aeon. Yeah, We're I back did, on yeah, the did you, page. Yeah. During, well, you, during those scenes, the, the road to the spear and the dedicated chapters, when they get in the Wayback Machine and we get to see the entire history, I told her at that point, like, this is some of the best writing that you will ever see in any series ever, ever. It, it is amazing. so good. I read those chapters forwards and then I read them backwards. Yeah. And then I read them forwards and then I read them backwards. <laughs> oh, really? That's awesome. Yeah. And then yeah, I that's... took very copious intense notes and i think that that episode might be the longest we ever did for sure yeah 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 that's i love that you talked about that one uh i have a question then do you have a is there someone among the aiel that is becoming kind of your favorite Ooh. um you know because you now introduced to more of the aiel at this point true okay well obviously evienda obviously obviously <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> probably i like the wise ones Okay. Like Emmys. Yeah. Like I think that they're yeah. no nonsense, strong, powerful women. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They Rua, are they are Rua, in the very literal sense, they're know. wise women. Like yeah. they are in a position of power, but they're also deserving to be in that position of power. And that's kind of one of the things you kind of start to see with the Aes Sedai, even is like there are some good Aes Sedai and there are some questionably terrible Aes Sedai so yeah and the, yeah and then there are those sneaky Shido the sneaky Shido we don't trust them but <laughs> well I, I have a question about the wise ones then as we're talking about them they they had sent a letter right uh, that shows up at the stone oh, of Tear, the believe, fortune right? telling letter yeah so what did you think about that I'm kind of curious uh, I haven't listened to your episode when you're talking you talk about this so I'm kind of curious what you, what was your opinion about that and then obviously they arrive yeah. And then they hear a little bit more because Moraine kind of almost talks them into it and they, they kind of give away something they weren't intending to. What do you think yeah. about that whole deal with the letter and them showing up there um, and what kind of transpired? I like it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really cool. And I think that they have a lot of abilities, especially in the dream world that we haven't seen yet so okay. we have seen elaine like dreaming with certain things and we've seen perrin seeing like windows cut in the sky mm. of like yeah. things happening yeah we've sort of touched on it and i think that the wise ones do it better well yeah they, gotcha. that's kind of the okay. disconnect though right because with Egwene, we literally get like every couple of Egwene chapters we'll get her listing off a page or roughly a, a page random dream of she's visions had. and stuff she's seeing and then after she describes everything it's like i don't know what that means so no time for that now yeah but <laughs> imagine if Egwene literally knew what every single sequence meant what she could do with that knowledge and that kind of seems like that's what the wise ones are already well, able to do and they even said like nothing is for sure yes we didn't yeah. even know for sure if they're like if she comes but he doesn't then yeah. you're gonna die and then if you come but they don't because they we're didn't see land coming yeah. and then moraine thinks it's because of naive or something it's like a it's whole a bunch whole of like these are the possibilities so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i, I love that we they gave us some insight into that moment uh, yeah again one of my favorite moments of because it adds complexity right to the story all of a sudden there's this other group of people and they have some capability to send this letter you know right. say, stating what they thought was going to happen i thought that was great so, yeah like oh we'll um, meet you in ruidian on tuesday morning yeah, yeah. <laughs> and was yeah, like, yeah. i don't know because i'm in tear this morning doubt so it. doubt yeah. it <laughs> likely not going to happen now there is another portion of this uh stepping back from the aisle we'll, we can go back to the aisle but i i want to Go back to the Stone of Tear uh, bef uh, before they leave. There's the attack that happens. Did that right. surprise you that they? Oh were right, attacked? that's the actual thing that I said that in my brain I hated was oh, yeah. when <laughs> Rand tries to reanimate the. Oh the okay, girl. yeah yeah. Okay. Oh gross, that was yeah. awful. And then we, he has the flashback, and we have to read that scene again. <laughs> I think that's yeah. maybe not in the Shadow Rising. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> but it's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't so, yeah, go away. The, uh, the, the the whole this whole idea of him trying to reanimate this individual i think that was one of the 
uh, moments that just almost sticks with me throughout the entire series. Uh, but yeah, that one. And I always kind of in my head, sometimes I think, cause I go, whatever, I haven't read the endings of the dragon reborn, the beginning of the shadow rising together in a, in a while. So I always, sometimes always mess up. Like maybe it's at the end of the dragon reborn, but I like that there was this, the way that Robert Jordan almost kicks things off has to do with another attack that happens there, right? They had already kind of like won the stone, but it wasn't over for him. Like there was no resting for the for the weary here, really. No. I mean, there's a little yeah. bit, but not much. Well, because and- then right away, I think before we get the shadow spawn attack, we get those bubbles of evil yeah. attack. Yeah, we do. We get the playing cards and then the axe. And yeah, the, a bunch of and random the reflect- yeah. reflections. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think about that? I'm kind of curious. Uh, so cool. A- about that so was it it was a cool was do you think there was did you think there was meaning in what was happening like oh what attacked them there's meaning in everything you, th- you think there's meaning in everything <laughs> yeah. is that how you do it brett yeah. you just yeah, reply like... back <laughs> oh you think there's meaning in everything yeah Matt, Matt has an unhealthy <laughs> relationship with gambling perrin doesn't like his axe very much and he Matt doesn't know him. who he is <laughs> yeah he's having like oh, identi- actually... an identity crisis that's here, so. true yeah yeah that's uh, those are fair <laughs> That's a fair interpretation, right? You read it like, oh, that's what it is. <laughs> he gambles. Of course, cards would attack him, you know? Yes. <laughs> like, and and uh, Perrin's angsty about the axe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was, what, a, what an interesting way to start off the book. Yes. And and then to have the attack come. And then what did you think about uh, Rand's decision with Kalendor? Good. Like putting it back so in the stone. So leave it there? Yeah, yeah leave it there. I yeah, think that was think a very that? sane decision. Okay. That's I that's think... a yeah, that's a good reaction to it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Even if the way he did it wasn't super very, sane. Yeah. <laughs> it was very dramatic. Yeah, yeah. It, like it wasn't insane. It was just dramatic. It was borderline. He needed all of those lords who were like arranging for Ram's murder yeah. to know that he meant business. And we, yeah. we got to give it to Rand. Like he does, he's doing a decent job right now. Like he's not doing terribly. And nobody's given him much credit. He's trying hard. He's reading a lot. He's learning a lot. He's doing the right things. I think he's reading too much. Oh. That whole (laughs) prophecy thing. No such thing. If he reads the the prophecies and he tries to exactly fulfill what is written. Yeah. Maybe that's what you're supposed to do. uh, You don't know. Well, it is part of the pattern, I suppose. Whatever he does, the pattern will just be like, yup. Boom. Plot armor. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that... um that idea about Rand actually kind of maturing somewhat or showing a little bit more competence than maybe the, the race in, or the, whatever he did in the dragon born, oh my it did God. make you kind of question where yeah. he was going to be when you met him again in the shadow rising. And he does seem like, okay, so maybe there's, he's... well, he got some sleep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, he ate a meal. Yeah. yeah. He figured out like his whole, he was having a question of who he was. He was having this, sort of crisis of self in the yeah. dragon reborn because he was like I, if i can get to the stone of tear if i can take calendar then i'll know for sure that this yeah. is who i am and who i'm supposed to be and so i think that he gets this sort of sense of self after he's got the sword and after he like actually kills bales on this time or so we think but right. no, we, <laughs> i know you it's always make that face well, i don't so know why you keep fair. coming back to that <laughs> Anything, anything can so, happen. I'm on so, the... Yeah. Uh, what I want to ask you about was, or I want to tell you, when I first read that, I hated the whole st- <laughs> the calendar. Like, I was like, what? You just, you have the weapon. You're not going to take it. With I you. would bring it with me. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I was he like, you know that movie? Like, super crazy when he was holding it. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's he, that like, aspect. But it was just like, it was, a, it was a weapon. And I was as a kid, I was reading this going like, I hated that in movies when like they dropped whatever you knock the guy over the gun dropped and then you run out of the room. And yeah. Like, no, like, pick up the gun. Get the <laughs> like, yeah. Go, yeah. You've got this giant. Yeah. I would bring the sword with me everywhere. Yeah, like oh. I was like, you're leaving it. So wait, yeah. there's for yeah. It's like when anyway, you leave the bad bothered. guy alive. Yeah. No. Yeah. And yeah. Then yeah. You, yeah. And then yeah. you exactly. t- turn to walk away and then the bad guy is trying to kill you again. And it's like, like, you should just probably kill him this <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I hated, I hated that. So, so yeah, but it's really interesting. Like you said, I, I like how you were like, you thought it was a really smart decision. Yeah. And de- dealing with the high lords, I, I I love that. So, well, and especially okay. going to the waste where he knows the Aiel don't care for swords. Maybe that was a maybe that had something to do with it, because he yeah. knew where he was going. Sure. He just didn't tell anyone else. That's true. He did have a plan. He was sweating a lot about it. Yeah, very sweaty if, guy. 
that's a good point. That's, that, that's a really good point. So there, there are a couple of things that clearly, I mean, there are a lot of things that happen here. I want to go back to some of them, but I want to take a little bit of break here. We just closed the raffle. Let's give away one of those right now, Taylor. We're going to open up the phone lines in about 10 minutes. So you can give us a call. Tell us what you think so far about, you know, what, what Danny and Brett have experienced so far in the Shadow Rising. But Taylor, yeah, go ahead and pick our first raffle winner to ask Brandon Sanderson a question. Basically to submit a question for me to ask Brandon during our live stream on June 17th. So go ahead, Taylor. And here we go. And uh, this is always that moment where there's like some delay between. Oh, there it is. Daniel Danker has won a Ask Brandon a Question. Daniel, hopefully you are still here. Just reach out to me on Discord. You can find the link to our Discord channel in the description of this video. You can also just check in with me on social media if you don't have Discord and don't want to join over there. But yeah, congratulations. We'll work out the details after this. Hopefully you're still around. I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen uh, Daniel reply back just yet. So we'll do another two here, uh, like I said, a little bit later in the show. With that being said, I want to jump on to our next kind of topic, how it should have ended. And this is bo mostly to ask you both, do you think it, did you like how this book ended? Did you like how Robert Jordan ended here? Yeah, wh basically, where did you leave off at the end of this? Were you excited about the, the next book? Were you just depressed? Did you want something else to occur? Uh, yeah, definitely not depressed. I thought it okay. ended on a very exciting note that I wasn't expecting. So my favorite thing about the end of this book is that it was not like the cookie cutter stamped out like the other three books where everyone's in the same place. They're, you know, solving a problem all together. They've all traveled different places and then they've all somehow without communicating met up in the same city for the same event. And so I loved how the Shadow Rising broke the mold a little bit yeah, and yeah. it went off and so the women in Tanchico they had their own you know stuff to deal with and then Perrin in the two rivers had his own stuff to deal with and Rand and had his own stuff obviously and so I love that just overarching like each individual stuff we can talk about how it actually ended but for each of them having their own problem to solve made the ending that much more exciting because there was more than just like one plot line to sort of wrap up. Yeah. I think Robert Jordan does a really good job of wrapping up the plot points for a book, but leaving you with enough information to be like, this is where I'm going with the story. Because like, even with the naive Elaine Mogedian thing, it's like, okay, so they kind of beat the Forsaken one time and they've done the Tanchico thing. And now we can go off into the next adventure, but we got like a final closing with that. Same with Rand. It's like, okay, He's Hugh comes with the dawn, but now there's this other big overarching issue for next book, right? So, and even Perrin is the plot point is done. He saved the two rivers, but now what? But what's next? So it's not like you're waiting <laughs> on these yeah. big like issues for the next book that's going to come out in two years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, even and even with Rand, he kind of left the main conflict, if you will. You yeah, know, and yeah. went. I, I mean. Maybe for him, this thing he went to is a was a main conflict, but yeah, kind of left it and came back to it. In other words, yeah, I like that you I like how you pointed out broke the mold. I think yeah. is a great point. This book does break a variety of molds, if you will, or the mold that we had in the first three books. The one and single so that, mold. Yeah, so yeah. that's what that's what I do like about it. Which I, I felt like things. I remember reading as a kid. Uh, I loved how it ended for Rand and Asmodian. That is to yes. say, I, I finally it. felt, I, I can remember this moment reading it the first time, just being like, yes, yeah. someone to teach, you know, yes. like that. I know. It that, was that, so I, good. That idea was really exciting to me because I, I, like I said, I was, I guess when The Shadow Rising came out, I was probably, um, I don't know, 17, 18, something like that. And I remember thinking like, this is awesome because he can finally fight back, you know, like there was this like yeah, moment, yeah. like he had, yeah. he had kind of been like run around and I, I felt, I was really excited about that aspect of it. Um, I don't think I had my, uh, a crush on Lanfear at the time. So <laughs> I don't remember any like strong feelings about that aspect. Yeah. That's the part remember, I really like. I is like it? That. Yeah. That's how you, did you like how that ended? Yes. 
Oh, yeah, that was great. <laughs> the reveal was so great. And like Rand being like, which one were you? Like he, like, he <laughs> yeah. totally knew, right? He, he like no one was fooling him. No, Rand was totally wrong. He was all eyes on he, Kadir no, the entire he time. Knew the peddlers, <laughs> Kadir, yeah, exactly. He knew the peddlers were super sketchy. He did, but he, he locked onto the wrong suspect. guy. He did lock onto the wrong guy, but yeah. he knew that that band of weird travelers was super suspect. Yeah. I'm like, good for you, because I don't know if anyone else caught on to that. Like Rand did. I did. But I don't know if anyone in the book did. But, well, you know, maybe maybe Moraine. But so, but we, I feel like we have to have to ask this question. We're adults. Uh, was it too tidy? Did you feel like it wrapped yeah. up really not, like too yes. like good for everything that was going on? Yeah. I was really expecting that we weren't going to get such a wrap up because you know we weren't all converging in the same city for like one Baalzaman fight that Ram thinks he's killed the dark one and <laughs> right, right, right. you know save the world so I really did think that we were going to get some things left unanswered and I mean to be fair the biggest thing that we had sort of left unanswered was the Swan Min Loghain Liana Liana thing yeah like they let they escaped and it's like okay now what like what's happening there yeah and then the other biggest thing that i felt was like revealed to us in the shadow rising was the morgaze and ravine like situation because we got introduced to it in the dragon reborn with matt yeah with morgaze sort of acting funny with this like random guy who's clearly bad news Yeah, yeah and then we find out like who it is and I really wanted there to be something there, but like, that's what I'm looking forward to in the next books for like that wrap up to happen. So even though our main characters did wrap up in a neat little package, (laughs) there's a lot else. There's There's some other things. The tree trunk to the branches. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, we're, we're we're not quite like up here in the tree. We're like still here. (laughs) But I I like how you brought up the fact that sure. Some other things are going to go up, but one of the more solid pieces of this, which was Tarvalon, right now that's in, you know, has kind of, that's that's in shambles. (laughs) Like that is now shaking. So Jordan does that really well in these first couple books, which is, you know, he'll give you kind of like, yeah, sure. This is okay. But this thing that you thought was okay, now it's that's shaking. Not, you know, yeah. Even like the, uh, even the, the the two rivers, you know, in book four, it's clear that's a, that is, those are different people, you know, that that come out of uh, that battle and everything that's happened than yeah. than when we saw them in the first right. Like the the world is changing and it's changing the people and uh, yeah. and things that used to be strong, yeah, are kind of weaker, if you will, or yeah. showing that they were maybe not as strong as you thought they were. So I I think I'll I'll give you that. It it feels a little bit too like, yeah, I you you won. But I I agree. There are some things that Jordan's showing us that are not really as nice as we thought they were. Yeah. Cause like the only thing that really wrapped up in a neat little package, I think was the two rivers. Cause I think in Tanchico, yes, they got what they wanted, but now the city is in like riots. Yeah. Civil wars. And (laughs) we don't know. We leave the shadow rising. We don't know if they're leaving or whatever, Nani wants to get to the tower, but yeah. we, we don't know if they're leaving. Or... And we don't know what happened to the Black Aja. Yeah. We don't know what happened to Mulgedian. Like, they're not even out of the city or anything. Yeah, so. we have no idea there. And then with the waste stuff, like, that, even though there was, like, that battle and Rand got his teacher, the Aeol are also just a mess. Yeah. Half of them are just like dropping their spears and running away. Half of them are yeah. like drowning, staring up at the rain probably. And <laughs> like, I don't like, it seems like a crazy mess and it's like, where are we going from here? Like it's not a perfect wrap up. Yeah. And, uh, and you, like you brought up, I think, uh, the, you also know that the, um, what are the fog or whatever that was around Roydian? Yeah. So yeah. That is now, that, now it's dispersing. We know that when they had the battle there, they were just like, <laughs> they were going crazy, like destroying all sorts of stuff and what yeah. there. And then Avendasora right? goes up in flames. Yeah, yeah and uh, Avendasora goes up in flames. Now, um, I think that this is the case. I think uh, Lesbian Nerdy is pointing out that I, I believe earlier versions um, did not have um, yeah. the tree burning down. Yes. Um, so, yeah, yeah I, I think I probably had, didn't realize that. Cause yeah, well, I only I found that, that out because I was listening to the audiobook while taking my notes for that chapter. 
And I remember, because I first, I read the physical book. I just sit down and read the chapters. And I remember thinking like, oh my God, Avendasaurus burned down? How can that be? And I thought it was crazy. And then when I was listening to the audiobook, which yeah. apparently was recorded from like the very first edition, yeah. they were talking about how only one branch was broke. And so I thought that was really strange. And so then I went yeah. back and I like looked into it and I um, put on Twitter, I mentioned uh, Maria uh, Sim Simons and, yeah. and yeah. she answered me. That's <laughs> and awesome. And let me know that it was a continuity error because like later on, eventually there's going to be a reference to a Vendasora being burnt, like rem it's, it's gotcha. burned and it has to be tended to, to like bring back to life. Gotcha. So, yeah. I, that's a, <laughs> that's yeah. it's one that catches me off guard. I think I've heard this before. I just forgotten, Yeah. but yeah. just in my head, that's not the way that it was because I, I yeah. just remember, I, I'm pretty sure this book sitting here is from the, is the, is the one that I bought. <laughs> back yeah. in the day. I'm pretty sure that does not have it is my guess. Uh, yeah. than, uh, so I now, now I want to, and after this, I'm going to have to go and take a look. Uh, so yeah, uh, really I've seen people it in was chat a kind of like, at, when yeah, we were it, it was so. a big thing. And yeah. I would have assumed that the audiobook on audible on audible is like the newest version. And so I thought that it was burning first and then they changed it to not be so burned. And so I was wrong and backwards. You get yeah. a lot of people in chat like they're all gonna go check it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we have a definitive answer though that the tree yeah. did burn. It burned. So yeah. that's yeah, what so it, it, that's it what burned. Apparently, is. that was the retcon. Yeah. It's Maria. But, Maria said. But the tree is okay. And the funny thing is that when I had never noticed that because I apparently had always read the versions where it burns. But in the same chapter, Rand immediately thinks about how people are going to have to tend to the tree to make sure it's okay in the future. So, like, I never had an issue with it because the tree, yeah, it's a little bit, of, you know, on fire. A blaze. But yeah. it's the tree of life, and it's all cool. Like, why are we worried about this? <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I love that. I love that little piece of uh, history. I'm, like I said, I see people in chat kind of like, wait, what? Yeah. Um, yeah, so... I want to remind everybody, this is a live call and talk show. If you'd like to give us a call, we have, I have a couple more questions for these wonderful people about uh, what are the new predictions, you know, what are the predictions that are hanging out still for us looking into the future? Mm -hmm. And then also w how you both feel about this book and, and how they're going to possibly adapt it and what do we need to keep mm. and what can we cut anything here when it comes to the Wheel of Time TV show? So, but if you want to give a call and you want to make some comments, you want to ask, uh, you know, Danny and Brett a question, of course, no spoilers past the Shadow Rising if you do call in and we'll weave you into this conversation. If you're still around, please do like this video while you're here. It helps other fans find it. Please do subscribe. And let's, let's Taylor, why don't you pick a second winner of the raffle and if you don't know, it's, you're here and you're getting in too late. You can't join this raffle. It, again, it's for being able to ask a question to Brandon Sanderson for, uh, sorry, submit a question for me to ask to Brandon Sanderson. And Amani has won a question. So Amani, if you are here, congratulations. Please do send me a note on Discord or over social media, letting me know that you'd won this. And we will, uh, we will uh, discuss kind of the details of how to get me those questions and how that will, might happen. So... Yeah, please do go ahead and send me a note. So congratulations, Imani, and our last winner, and I'm totally blanking on our last winner's name. So, um, Daniel. Daniel. Yeah, thank you, Taylor and Danny. <laughs> so so uh, while we wait to see if any calls come in, let's move on to our next segment, Predicting the Weaves. So, uh, th yeah, this is a this I always love to find out, which is, okay, we well, got some things right. Maybe you got a thing wrong while reading it. Is there anything you st at the end of this book? Because I know you've you've both you've begun the fires of heaven, right? Yeah, we're about halfway through fires of heaven, actually. Okay. But, yeah. So take that out of context of yeah, what you of know course. you know at this point. At the she end, she listened of... back for some of her old predictions. So oh, did I she? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so at the end of the Shadow Rising, what are some of the predictions you either still had or new ones that you come up with? So I, when I finished the fires of heaven, and we. Oh no, we started the Fires of Heaven and we finished the Shadow Rising. Um, I was predicting that Nynaeve and Elaine are going to make it to the tower and to find out that shit went down there. Yeah. Like I thought we were yeah. gonna have maybe gonna have a big jump in time 
to the next book where it's like, okay, they went cross country and they made it here. Yeah, it's like six are, month time lapse. There we are go. Crazy. Yeah, so okay. like that's okay. what I thought was going to so happen a, with them. That's an outstanding prediction for that. Okay, so uh, that's an interesting <laughs> prediction. Uh, yep. What else? What else did you have? So I am still on board with this prediction. Okay. But I really want the more gays and Ravine situation to okay. come to an end. Like, yeah, so I, yeah, yeah, you want that to be a I central to theme be the to focus. Fires of Heaven. I'm just, I want more gays thing. to be saved. Gotcha. That's yeah. what gotcha. I want. Okay, so yeah. you want that conflict to come to an end. Yeah, and, um, feel for okay. her. I yeah. Hate, yeah, I hate that guy so much. C- kind of the way uh, we think of these books, or we or I or whatever you want to call it, is that you have like the big overarching themes, but then you have like these mini plot points that can get resolved in a book. And RJ does a good job of like bringing stuff up in a book that's going to be resolved in that book, possibly, and like questionably only sometimes though. So yeah, but yeah, so like a couple plot points, and I know one that you had said that you really want resolved in the Fires of Heaven is getting this Coolin guy murdered. <laughs> kill him, kill him off, I get him dead. Let's like finish this. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's get it done. So yeah. So um, what is what is your prediction, uh, for example? What do you predict will be the uh, will happen with Kuladin? Do you have like a prediction? I well, I'm gonna go back to what I did predict because I have yeah. read into the Fairs of Heaven, and so yeah, I yeah. don't want to say. Um, yeah, what did you? What? Yeah, what did you predict at the end of the Shadow Rising? Yeah, I definitely thought that um, there weren't gonna be very many Aiel following him because I thought with everything happening and you know the chiefs and the wise ones being like no he's actually a liar because we also didn't talk about how Rand just told all the Aiel that yep. <laughs> they actually should be tinkers and <laughs> sort of, and they like hate their yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, yeah, no, we get it. We get it. So your, prediction, the way the your, your prediction at the end of the shadow rising is because of what Rand has revealed. Um, the Aiel are going to turn against him. Basically. That's what I, yeah. Okay. That's, that's what that's I really your, thought. That's your prediction. Okay. Yeah. Because it really seems like, he's a big phony. I'm yeah. like, how could anyone trust him? And I get that they are going to trust an Aiel more than the outsider, but with the chiefs and the wise ones confirming that Kuladin's a sneaky phony, shouldn't <laughs> they all turn on him? That was like, oh yeah, everyone just go get that guy. Right, I don't right, know. Right. <laughs> I just didn't like him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now you, but now you know that uh, Asmodian is with, at, at the end we know Asmodian yeah. is with, uh, with Rand. Yes. So what is your prediction did you have a prediction at the end of the Shadow Rising how that was going to turn out? Like what was going to happen there? Yeah, I thought it was going to be great. Classes. We get a teacher. Classes. Yes, yeah, it's going to be. <laughs> but I, honestly, like big ribbon, that's a, like a we're good. We're good here. So. Well, yeah. And my prediction was it's going to be great. Yeah. My prediction from the start, especially when they like climb out of their little gateway wormhole or whatever it is. And Moraine is like. What's that guy doing right hey, beside you? <laughs> Who's that hey, guy? Hey, what's that guy? <laughs> hey, that's the Glee man. What's he doing? And I yeah. 100% Maureen, like, I think that Maureen knows exactly who this is and what's going on. <laughs> yeah. And she's just, like, letting it happen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, like, yeah, I like it. Those are good. Guy. Okay, so any other uh, predictions that came out that you remember at the end of Shadow Rising that you yeah. had? Like, any? yeah, anything else that you want to Yeah, share? so I predicted that Fail and Perrin are going to Saldea. To meet okay. the family. And having babies. And yeah, I predicted babies, but I, <laughs> I like haven't it. forgot about Barrelane. Oh, right. Okay. Totally yeah. being the hawk. Yeah, you think she's still in the picture. Oh, for sure she's coming yeah. back. Okay, Probably so you think Saldea. Probably not like in the next book, but. Saldea and ba- babies, and, and but Barrelane is still. Going to be uh, something. There. Okay. Yeah. I like it. I like it. That was good. Uh, yeah, anything else? I like these are good. Yeah, um, that... I predicted that Matt is going to go off on his own. He needs to find a new adventure. Yeah, he needs okay. to, like, do something that's not... Now that he's done the whole, like, oh, he was told to go to Ruidian, and now he has. He's I... got no more instructions on where to go. Yeah, he needs to figure <laughs> out something else. Yeah. And, yeah, he, like, I predicted that he's going to have, you know, become some sort of lord or battle general or something, even though he really doesn't want that. Okay. Does he keep saying because I'm not he keeps lord? saying I'm yeah. not that. So that's my <laughs> cue that that's like going to happen. Just like okay. Avienda's like, I don't want to get married. So I think the next thing that's going to happen is she's going to get married. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like there's okay. just. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how you're that's how you're like uh, whatever the character says they don't want to do. It's that's what Jordan is setting them up for. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So I like the idea. Uh, you think Matt's 
done with it or you predict Matt's done with his brooding sidekick days yeah and he's going to move on to be uh, yeah a, what did you say uh, a lord and a battle because well, he's got the yeah. like battle general in his head or something like that because okay. he, he has his like new memories that are kind of weird yeah he like so he needs to figure that out he needs to get back with with like tom and they got to go have yeah, some fun they again. were yeah. they were a good pair. <laughs> yeah they were they were good. they were a good pairing yeah, yeah. i did like them. <laughs> that was like the best part of the dragon reborn mm. was the matt tom yeah. stuff let's I get like, like a duo like that again so uh, yeah. So uh, you're basically you have Rand. He's just going to be like in full Harry Potter at school mode or something, you know. Um, <laughs> Fael is like uh, Gandalf taking the you know Hobbit parent to meet his family. Uh, Love yeah. it. Yeah. And then you have Matt like uh, basically going against all the things he wants and becoming the actual Lord in general. <laughs> okay, sure. I like it. I like it. Um, and uh, the. Anything else before we bring our first caller in here that you remember uh, as far as, yeah, just some kind of uh, prediction that you have coming up? Um, I do remember because right at the end we have Fane saying that he's going to get to Tarvalin. And like right off the hop, I was like, there's no way he's making it to Tarvalin. Yeah. Like there's no way he's going to get stopped. He's going to get sidetracked. Something's going to happen. Yeah. And then I also thought that this like Luke Esam character, Mm -hmm. we're definitely not done with him. Okay. I don't think he's dead because right. like he like left injured. He left out of town injured. He wasn't dead when we last saw him. So yeah. Big rule is that if you don't see them die, they're not dead. They're not dead. So yeah. Okay. And so I, like I think that maybe he's probably working with a forsaken because he okay. seems to be like a weird character. <laughs> weird character. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I like Heard it here first. Yeah. I like it. These are good. These are good. Uh, I love again hearing the predictions. That's that's been my new favorite thing. My wife is also reading the books, so I just now that's my first tendency to be like, "What do you predict is gonna happen?" <laughs> I don't know why I'm you so have fascinated. To, like hold this face where you're like, "So you yeah. think that's gonna happen?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because again, they're not stopping every like two or three chapters and like reading yeah. it and dissecting it. So it's funny is that most of the time it's they have a character that's their favorite, and it's just like. I want to see this happen yeah. or they have other characters least favorite. And it's like, I want to see this person die or something. Right. You know, and it's like yeah, yeah. either, either death and go away or something you know, really exciting happen. So, yeah, I don't know yeah. if anybody, I just want to, I just want to talk about my experience of when I first read the wheel of time. I don't know if anyone did this too, but I would have my favorite characters that I would want to hear from. And I would flip ahead to see when the next like Rand perspective was going to be. And I'd be like, okay, only six more chapters until I get a Rand perspective. So <laughs> I got to read through six chapters before I go to bed tonight. So tomorrow I can wake up and read a Rand perspective. But there's also some <laughs> chapters that have a perspective change in like in the middle. I know. The that's why you kind of like to kind of take a peek, but it's not perfect but it's like a system that, that seems I sort of really had, so. like cheating yeah that's what it was. <laughs> well I, I i didn't realize our first caller is an international caller and i've been made, making her wait a little bit too long so let me bring our first caller into the show welcome lesbian nerdy to the dusty wheel how you doing hey i'm doing well <laughs> good to talk to you guys yeah, yeah you too you too so uh what's your thought what's your question for my wonderful guest tonight Yes. Well, um, I actually don't know how to word this question, but I kind of just wanted to ask Danny if you could talk about... Danny, you articulated something uh, in one of your episodes that I've been trying to figure out how to say for a very long time, and you said it so well about the different way uh, that men are are perceived and women are perceived in like the way that they think about themselves and the way that they come across. Mm -hmm. And I guess I just wanted to see if you could talk about that a little bit. Sure. Yeah just re-say what you've said yes yeah yeah. absolutely you did have a good point sure so let me see if i can remember what i said (laughs) (laughs) you're like it was really good it was really good in fact let me just like hold on let me play it for you one second (laughs) yeah exactly um no i think that the biggest overarching thing between the men and the women it's that all of our main characters are being told how great they are and how important they are. So for example, Nynaeve, um, Elaine, Egwene are being told they're the strongest, you know, in generations of Aes Sedai and they can be so great if they only try. And the boys in our group are these Tavirin who are shaping the pattern and are so important and the dark one is out for them. And so overall, they're all being told similar things, but the women, have this like ego 
about how they're so great. They're arrogant and they have this sort of false sense of confidence and they go into these situ they get themselves into these situations thinking I'm so much better than everybody else when and that's just my take on just overarching what happens and then with the men especially like Perrin um, Matt Rand I'm no lord I'm no hero I can't do this and so there's this shift and and then they end up doing really well and doing what they're supposed to you know end up doing and so it's just this sort of shift on just the very surface level of why are these women so incredibly arrogant and think that they're so much better just because people have been telling them they're so great and the men think that they can't accomplish anything and are like self-deprecating that's just does that make sense is that yeah. what you were talking about jenny Oh, it, yeah, it does. That's exactly it. Like, it's this, the way the narrative is written a lot. I, I'm not everybody gets this. I, you know, I'm, we can't speak for everyone, but you articulated something that I've been trying to figure out how to say for a while, where a lot of the narrative leads us to sympathize with the men and root for them and to think, oh, these women need to be taken down a bit. They're right. too, they, they think they're above themselves. Yes. It, it, it's very, it's, it's an unfair portrayal, I think. It's, or it's, it's just very skewed, I, yeah. I feel. And yeah, I was well, just, when I listened to that, I actually went back and rewound it and was like, yes, that's <laughs> she said it. Yeah. yeah. Well, when I, when I read it, I was so young that it, I didn't, I don't know that I felt that exact thing so much versus it. I was young. So I was like, I hate the adults, you know, the adults yeah, right. suck, you know, it was like all the adults yeah. were telling all the, all the kids <laughs> what they could and couldn't do. Now, obviously I, I did, also kind of lean towards loving, you know, maybe Matt, uh, as a character. And so, yeah. you know, he was, he was very much like yeah. everyone was just telling him how much, you know, he did wrong and how much, how much he's even the, even the people his own age. Yes. <laughs> like, and now as an adult, you know. you're like, Matt's a little asshole. So. Yeah, exactly. Now I'm like, Oh my gosh, he is so precocious. <laughs> oh, is you know? he so entertaining? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, yeah. that's a, That was a great question. Jenny, uh, and I just love how though yeah, our it, version of our way of seeing it does change over not just our life experience, but our age, you know, uh, just as you grow oh, up with these characters, you come back and read them. You're like, yeah. you totally see how Jordan made them empathetic in, but for different people, you know, different and people. And I kind of wonder if that's like almost like one of those RJ isms where was that a thing that RJ intentionally wrote about where it's like, typically you see the, the guys as the arrogant, egotistical i'm better than everybody so i should do this and then he kind of like and flips it in reverse some, where it's like oh seen as self -deprecating yeah it's like okay the enough. women are going to be overly yeah. confident when they shouldn't be and the men are going to be like you know i just hate that there's yeah. a divide at all like why oh, can't yeah, there's... some characters <laughs> yeah. be overconfident yeah. and some characters be self-deprecating why does it have to be the men do this and the women exactly do this? that's that's yeah. the issue too. why is it gender yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. he does yeah. he does have like jenny like one of those like oh sorry go ahead jenny so I was just going to say, like, even recently I saw a poll happen on Reddit and all of the men ended up at the top and the women were at the bottom. And they were saying, yeah, this is just evidence of how annoying all the women in these books are. Like that, that is a, I mean, granted, Reddit tends to skew male, but that is a perspective that a certain segment of the watch fandom has is that the women are just annoying. Yeah. And, and I even feel that. I, I think, think the I'm way guilty. Danny explained it is a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm guilty uh, of saying that all the time. Right, this oh, is a delay, which makes us talk over each other. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> it's okay. No, but I was gonna say he does, but he does. Then again, he always does have one or two or three characters that flip that. You know what I mean? Yeah. That don't yeah. follow that trend, and it, mm -hmm. and it kind of are counter even the culture that he's embedding it, whatever into the into the writing he does. So it's not just like a one to one all the time. But it's it, you can certainly see some of that there for sure. Um, Master, the Deft, Master the Deck just said, I think RJ changed power dynamics without changing gender roles, which makes these characterizations great, really hard. Yeah. So it, again, yeah, yeah there, there are there's that kind of piece that exists, and then you but people glob onto the but there's this other character that doesn't do that, and that ends up being often a favorite character that doesn't yeah. play into that piece of it. Yeah. Uh, well, what we find too is that the adults are all very confident and competent like all the sort of like the moraine mm -hmm. clan tam um yeah like, you know all of the sort of stable adults that we have in 
the crew all like the wise ones and the chiefs like they all really know their stuff and they're not overconfident they're not arrogant but they're also not self-deprecating and like so you get that nice balance of a, like a just a very secure person in all of the people like tom all the people who have all these like life experience and i and think my, that that probably yeah. adds to it yeah i almost said i almost said somebody else but it, it'd be fine if i said this but i don't want to anyway <laughs> it's like <laughs> the person exists in the shadow risings but no, anyway, we're gonna, anyway, it's uh, we'll stop there we'll stop there so stop hey there. jenny thank you so much for okay. calling in i appreciate it sorry for making you wait a couple minutes there but we'll hopefully yeah. talk to you again soon no okay? worries bye-bye yeah okay thanks bye so we have two more callers this last two callers we'll take tonight then i want to get a final take on the wheel of time tv series coming up and see what you think. What, how difficult do you think this is going to be for Rafe and his team to ad- adapt the Shadow oh Rising? So let me bring, uh, first of all, uh, Frank into the call. Frank, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing tonight? Hi, I'm doing great. How are you guys? I'm a first-time caller, so I'm real excited. Awesome. Hi, Frank. Awesome. Hi, Frank. Well, welcome. So where are you at in the books yourself? Are you also so, a first-time okay, reader? Okay. Um, yeah, so technically I shouldn't be here because I have 30 pages left of The Shadow Rising. Next oh, my God. Um, oh, no. I can't believe that. You should not be here. Well, okay, there's a bit of a story with this. Um, so my uh, high school um, Brit Lit teacher, uh, three years ago he got me into the series, um, and recently he sent me an email um thinking that i was done with the shadow rising i was not so i have the ending uh all spoiled for me <laughs> uh, but gotcha. um i'm very excited to continue um i just left off at a real cliffhanger with uh parent coming back to the two rivers um or back to emmons field um and then and uh the next chapter is a breaking in the threefold land so oh, i mean this ending is I'm, you can I'm, hang I'm up really right now and go finish this book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what are you doing? It. I know, I know. Like, have you been listening? I feel like I said so many things already. No, no, no. It's, well, what's what's no, great is, I, Frank, I, weren't I, you at, like, didn't you have eighty pages like an hour ago? So you've been reading. Have you been reading while? Yes, we I've been. <laughs> I've been multitasking. <laughs> to be fair, this is all your teacher's fault. We can blame it on that. Yeah. So. Well, because Frank, I saw Frank. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Joined early in chat, and I saw that, and I was like, "Go, keep reading." Keep reading, and you're almost there. So, 30 <laughs> pages left. Oh That's my impressive. gosh! So, okay. That's so, before we let you, before we let you go and get back to reading the final 30 <laughs> pages of, of that book, which are great pages, uh, what what comment or question did you have for you know Danny and Brett? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this book is now like in my top three favorite books of all time, and I'm a big fantasy reader. Um, it just blew me away in terms of how how huge everything's gotten. I mean, everyone always talks about how the original three books feel like, you know, a very self-contained trilogy in many ways. Um, And so I'm, you know, and I heard it first on Daniel Green's channel, but like, I'm just blown away at how big this world has gotten. And um, interestingly enough, like all the characters, the select few who I was just, you know, not really sold on, um, this book has just even the like the big bads like i mean elida's getting up there like i i love everyone yeah. um i i i can't even express how much i love these characters and how real and like flawed they God. feel it, and yeah. i mean i've been with them for like 3000 pages I don't, I don't even know and so they feel like you know my besties by now so yeah <laughs> yeah it's it, and that's probably part of the love of this book also is yeah. that we have seen some maturation or You've gotten past that kind of like on TV, they talk about like that first episode or first season. You're into the fourth season. You know, yep. you, you're kind of expecting a certain kind of pace to a certain character's speech and you're waiting for that joke they're going to tell or you're waiting for them to say that thing that's mm-hmm. going to make you laugh. Or, you know, so I, I think there is something to be said for this being the fourth book in the series and it being so good that everyone kind of globs onto it for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I think I would say with this book in particular not only are the characters expanding but the world is expanding like we yeah. learn all mm-hmm. of the backstory to the aiel which is huge we learn a little bit about the sea folk even mm-hmm. we get into that and then yeah. we get a first-hand perspective from a shan chen like left behind like we get more about that stuff so i i think that just like the world expanding and the characters expanding it's all just so 
that's why this book stands out to me so far. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's fascinating. And one of my favorite parts, I think, of the book is even returning to the places that I feel like we, we know so well. Like, I was so elated, but also heartbroken to return to the uh, to Emmons Field. Um, and, I mean, Perrin, I think his arc in this book is definitely one of my favorites. Nynaeve's my favorite character, like, by far so far. But um, I, I've Perrin's arc in this book just, it broke me in half. Like, um, just his growth and, and Fayil, I've grown to love her as well. It, it, it's, it feels like returning home. Like when you go to the, when you go back to Emmons field and I'm just, I'm so excited to see that, um, you know, just transferring to the show. Like we, we've seen those, uh, news articles with, uh, the actress for Marin Alvere, her, um, talking about returning for season three, possibly, you know, fingers crossed, um, but I'm just so excited to see all that in the show. And I, yeah, it's going to be, I, I can't even express how excited I am. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, I absolutely agree with you there. And, and I do like how they return there. It has like a little bit of a, you know, uh, Lord of the Rings feel to it, but I love that it's, it's yeah. happening in book four, you know, uh, yeah, we're not waiting until the, end. You're not waiting until the very, very end or something. Yeah. I love that it's happening right now. And it, to me, it was always Jordan's kind of twist on, on that story. And, uh, and I always loved that in the Lord of the Rings. For sure. And so, hey, right, well, thank you very much, Frank. Congratulations. You're almost thank there. Go finish go those read. last 30 pages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, thank you very much for being the first time. Right. Hopefully See you'll you come guys. back and uh, come back to the Dusty Wheel we'll, uh, when we do another New Readers episode. And hopefully when you finish the series, you can come back yes, and catch up. Course. So, hey, have a good one. Thanks so much. Yeah, bye-bye. At that pace, he's going to be done 20 minutes <laughs> so like the entire yeah, yeah. series like yeah. before i'm done fires of heaven oh yeah yeah <laughs> okay so this is how it's gonna go we have one more caller uh amani in chat gave back her question to, to another uh oh. felt like she was kind of a new reader with brandon stuff and wasn't ready to ask brandon a question offered that back up to everybody in chat so we're gonna pick we're gonna take this last caller pick two more winners of a question for brandon sanderson and get final thoughts from you on the Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime and call it an evening here at the Dusty Wheel. Hopefully you've all been enjoying our new reader look at the Shadow Rising and some old readers too. Uh, but we're trying to stay really non-spoilery. So it's a lot of fun, honestly, to try to do that, right? Uh, I, I've had to work really hard not to ruin things. Uh, <laughs> but that being said, please do like this video while you're here. We'd really appreciate that. And yeah, let me bring in our last caller of the evening. Welcome, Stubby to the dusty wheel how you doing tonight hey hey can you hear me yeah, yeah. Can you hear us? Hey. all right all right so in this book there's a lot of foreshadowing going on a lot of it mm -hmm. it happens um my question to you is what did you take on ran shoving the sword back in the stone of tear and what do you think about that foreshadowing like because he obviously mentions it to moraine yeah. Yeah. So what do you think? Yeah. What do you think his purpose is on that? That's true. Because even Maureen was like, why didn't you take that with you? Yeah. You could do a lot of stuff with that thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the biggest foreshadowing is that, well, he says I'm coming back for it. When that'll happen, I don't know. And is another Forsaken going to try to steal it and then get whatever trap sprung yeah because he that's did say, what i, I kind almost, of hope for yeah, he says i almost hope that they would come and try and take it Ooh. yes <laughs> yeah, yeah so what maybe maybe okay, tell but, us then, what is what is your prediction then um what do you think so uh, going to? Well, well oh do you have a different question on that stuff just be careful not to ruin anything man, from, from um the, just to say go ahead he I, i'm not he says literally i have read the prophecies of the dragon and he who pulls a sword will follow me forever so, so, what, so do think, yeah. what do you guys think about that? Interesting. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, I probably <laughs> did at the time, but I don't remember that. So I think that that means somebody is going to try to take it. And the trap he set was some sort of. Ooh, okay. Okay. Like compulsion to follow. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah, I to, get like, it. To not I betray him if he tries yep. to take it. That'd okay. be cool. That'd yeah. be cool. I like that. Sorry, I like that too. That's yeah. I, I want that to happen. So that's cool. <laughs> I'm trying to look up and see if I can find the exact yep. quote from the, yeah. no, I can't, I can't find the exact quote. Yeah. That's a good, that a, it, it, yeah, a good he, question. 
Yeah, because he he tells that to Moraine after he shoves it in the sword. Why did you do that? And he says, he who pulls a sword will follow me forever. So, yeah, I just want to know your guys' take on that yeah, that's prophecy, good one. I guess. That's, that's so not that's what you're getting, it. I think. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's, it that's my take. I, that's what I wanted to ask. Like, of course, that sounds great. I mean, only somebody who can channel can take it, I think. Okay. Because of the way he put it in there. Like, I don't think that it can just be, like, yanked out by somebody – otherwise also i found it here i think i found the oh. exact quote for you so uh it says Egwene laid a hand on his arm but moraine would not allow him to sidestep you know that is not what i mean he nodded this time his smile had a frightening rictus quality calendar with that in my hands i can do anything anything i know i can do anything but now it's a weight off my shoulders you don't understand do you she did not though it nettled her that he saw it she kept silent he went on perhaps it will help if you know it comes from the prophecies into the heart he thrusts his sword into the heart to hold their hearts who draws it out shall follow after what hand can grasp that fearful blade you see straight from the prophecies oh yeah yeah that's good that's good so What's your thoughts on that one? <laughs> yeah, is it, I can't remember what we so knowing that that so that exact quote. Uh, do you have a prediction right now, Danny? That you want, or do you want to think about that prediction and come back to it? Say uh, a name. Give us something. Who's, give a name. You want a name? Who's going yeah. after this? Who thing? draws it who out? Shall this? follow who's after. Who's going after yeah. this thing? So I don't know the forsaken. Oh, I don't want to know. I don't want to you know don't what you don't know. I want to know what you, you think. <laughs> I know you don't want me to like logic this out. I'll just like throw something out. So you know who we haven't heard from yet? Oh, wait, it, it should be a guy, right? Why? I don't know because wait, uh, of the way why? the weaves go. Sure. Okay. I don't okay. know. I love the, uh, I love uh, the oh, live. Lanfer told us. Lanfer told us. Okay. I'm not helping you with this. I know. <laughs> Anyway, I think it's going to be, um, is. Yep. Do it. Say it. Uh, Samuel. <laughs> Samuel. Okay. There we go. Okay. I love. Okay. This is now a new tradition. When we All do right. these episodes yeah, at the end, you have to like make a new prediction. Force her to say something that she doesn't. <laughs> yes. Know. I want to I'm I have force no you to go Samuel, live. Samuel, he's go Okay. So here's what's uh, going to happen. Okay. <laughs> the. There's going to be a bunch of people from Tyr who are going to try to go attack Ilian, or maybe Ilian's going to know that the Ter the Terran army is like headed into Kyrian. See all switcheroo. And they're going to like go try to take Tyr. Okay. And then Sam, I was going to be like, oh, this calendar is right here and I'm going to take it. That's what's okay. going to happen. I love it. I love it. You have Done. a, there you go, Stubby. You got your answer. Got it? I love that you had, I love that you got a, first, Danny to do a live prediction. So that's great. <laughs> hey, thank you very much for being our yeah, last. You're moment, welcome. Man. Have thank a good you. one. That's funny. Good That's good. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. So, yeah, that, that's great. I think you need to do a live prediction at the end of each one of these. Samael is uh, like the right straight out of the prophecies here. So, cool. What a great, uh, great final answer. So, Taylor, let's pick our final two winners uh, of the questions for Brandon. And then we'll jump to our last topic. And then we'll say goodnight here at the Dusty Wheel. So here we go. We have two winners coming up. Who will get a chance to submit a question for me to ask to Brandon on our June 17th live stream? Well, first of all, thank you, Ryan uh, Tims, for leaving us a ridiculously nice tip. That's very, very much appreciated. So thank you. Um, and uh, you're awesome. Uh, so... Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Ryan timed that because I was it throws you right off. Yeah, yeah, he does. He, I feel like he likes to do that. <laughs> so, so thank you, Ryan, and congratulations, Liam Ashton, who has won a question to ask Brandon. Uh, Liam, hopefully you're you're still here. Um, and once again, yes, thank you very much. Oh, did I, oh, Bard of the Red Hand won too. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking wow. that the Bard was uh, the, the Bard was just admining there. So the Bard of the Red Hand, thank you, congratulations, Bard and Liam, and Liam's here. So awesome! I know the Bard's here. So yeah, congratulations to you, Liam, and you, the Bard, and yes, Taishar Ryan. Uh, this is Ryan's comment was Taishar Innkeeper, excellent content as usual. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you, appreciate that. Okay, so. Final thing and final question I have for you tonight is keep or cut for TV. 
this you don't have to go into a like, terrible detail okay. here but if you're adapting this how do you possibly yeah what are you going to keep what can you cut when it comes to the shadow rising you should it, ask MTV. some less qualified people because <laughs> we are not qualified to answer this matt i don't we know have what no you do. idea how to write <laughs> anything for tv like we have yeah. no idea how tv is was well, there anything here that you think you could drop from yeah. the books and still have a you know yeah. an understandable kind of plot whether or not it's characters or events that happen yeah is i will answer that you your is, question yeah, not avoid it. It. but i will <laughs> say that it a hundred percent matters what is in the first couple of seasons true like that will a hundred percent let us know what's important to keep and what's not because i have no idea what direction they're going in. i'll give you some and we're already here. like pretty far in you can cut the entire tan chico plot line <laughs> the entire tan chico out where the women okay. go and like do something on their own cut it you'd out cut it. Um, okay you'd cut it there you go. Um, oh, those are in chat still with us what would you give me something in chat that you believe you could yeah. cut either you a person it, or a, or an event from the shadow rivers. rising so oh, sorry battle of two rivers you'd cut no keep Oh, okay. You need <laughs> like, to keep it, and I'll actually not be surprised if it happens way sooner. Yeah. That's, yeah. I, I, it's so tough, but I think you could get away with Tan Chico, but I still, so many interesting things happen at Tan Chico. I, like we said, that's one where they really establish them, their own kind of journeys. Um, so it's a really hard one to cut. You do that in other ways, though. I think you're right. Yeah, Maybe. that's what I'm saying. It's like, I have no idea, but also I got to give you some hot takes here. So oh, yeah, I got to exactly. say something. I, I, I think that the whole... Let's be nerdy. Before I go, Brett is canceled. Yeah. <laughs> cut, cut the IEL right out of the story. We don't need the IEL. They're not really important, right? I love, by the way... I want people to listen <laughs> to things we have to say. I swear I don't say things like this all the time. <laughs> I, what I love is that people are throwing out, like, I asked to cut things and like, Rajesh said, cut Elaine's letters. <laughs> oh god yes no, i think that's i can't believe support. i think i feel like thomas mark is uh is just playing with us here cut roidium uh, oh no, yeah that's gotta be a joke that's gotta be, <laughs> that's gotta be a joke that uh, this, history like maybe not in the same way but i do think that that history needs to be i mean but that's literally like that's like a, a already adapted for tv screenshot of what you can do like i swear that entire scene those two chapters, you could just do a word for word remake for yeah. TV. I think or you good. could. I, I think this is true. I think you absolutely could condense the way too many chapters in the Stone of Tear. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, there's a I lot know. that goes on there. And it's like, are they ever leaving this place? Um, I think you could get away with cutting a lot of that. I will, that's, that's a place where I, do, I, I agree that you could cut for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, yeah, I'd say. Probably the whole swan being deposed thing. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens way sooner. Yeah, because we are getting the story that. Because we need some Aes Sedai excitement. Yeah, we, like, need, we need tower business before. We need tower before, stuff before, happening so. to like draw people who've like never read the books to like know that we should care about the women in the tower. Yeah, it's. It's always an interesting question. I love to ask it. Keeping things is easy. Look, yeah. let's be honest. Okay. The Shadow Rising, I want to keep it all because it's The Shadow Rising. It's such a great book. I think everything there is really interesting. But you know they're going to cut something, so I love kind of seeing what people are willing to give up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and I love, you have to go back and check out what some of the individuals are throwing into here as things you could cut. So You know what? Okay. I'm, I'm going to give you one more hot take. Okay, let's hear it. Cut Cool It In. What? Okay. You could have nice. Rand be he who yeah. comes to the dawn, and you could just have some of the, you know, Aiel not super fond of that. You could cut out Kuladin and not have him be like a alt he who comes of the dawn. Yeah. You could. You could. Uh, I like the idea that they're, because they're always, is that, I like that I character. I like the idea of everything that was written. But yeah, I but I like the character, but like you could. That. Don't get me wrong. I, yeah. I love, I love everything. Yeah, yeah. I want, I want a scene for scene remake of the books as a TV show, but I get it's not going to happen. So yeah, no, it's a, yeah, it's a fun, it's a, it's always a, it's always a fun question to, <laughs> and everybody gets upset. Yes. It's like in the in the comments afterwards, everyone's going to write like, "You guys are not real fans. Uh, right. <laughs> real fans wouldn't accept it." Um, so I, I love asking that question. Okay. Yeah. 
So quick questions here for you before we end. Okay. Uh, Danny, soundtrack or song for The Shadow Rising? Oh. My heart will go on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My heart will I was, go on. I was thinking a little, something like a little bit more upbeat. Oh, no, nope, no way. My heart will go on. <laughs> something Shania Twain. I don't know. I'm also bad at music. I don't know. A Shania Twain album for The Shadow Rising. I know. I like, said, oh. or something Shania Twain. <laughs> I love it. Okay, best like, chapter title. Like, Let's Go Girls? That song? <laughs> sure. Man, I Feel Like a Woman? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. the whole oh. uh, women in Tanchico. I love it. The I love whole it. one, I have, to, I have to think about it. Okay, uh, favorite chapter title. I asked Danny to look into this. Yeah. Favorite chapter title in The Shadow Rising? Favorite chapter title or yeah. favorite chapter yeah. title? Favorite Ch chapter title. The chapter, the title of my oh, favorite way, I just, chapter. I is love leaving coming. you in the confused state. Yeah. Oh just yeah, like, no favorite just like, chapter title. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, can can it be because I like what's in the chapter? It can. Or just like yeah. okay, because a cup was, of wine <laughs> is hilarious. A cup of wine. Elaine gets like wine drunk, and that's so funny. Yes, a cup of wine's good. Do you have one, Brett? I know you said homecoming, right? So I it like can't be that one. Yeah. You, now we're just talking about chapters I like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh man, there's a, into the doorway. Yeah, the doorway. I'm going that yeah. one. That's a good. That's one. a good yeah. chapter title. What lies yeah. hidden? They're all good. I'm They're just gonna good. read. I'm just gonna read all. The <laughs> awesome. If we keep going, there's only like sixty of them. So. Okay, last last question. At the end of this, uh, Danny, you have to cut a character from the entire series today. Yeah. Which one which character is gonna be? Elaine. <laughs> Elaine oh is your God. character. Elaine's gone. That's right. And Danny's, I've... if you have any hate mail, you can send it to the Wheel Weaves podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine is gone. Wow. Well, she's okay. just too, I've described it as mashed potatoes. Yeah. Elaine she gets overpowered. Potatoes. She gets she overpowered in her perspective. So like nothing. you forget that you're in an Elaine perspective sometimes because she's just observing everything going on. I've said it before so. and I'll say it again. Elaine. Uh, so, bland. <laughs> Brett, I have to give you the same question. You have to be forced into this. Cut a character right now. Re entire series. Go. I could cut nobody. No, you have to. <laughs> you have to. Oh man, I'm just gonna pick like a tertiary character. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. Someone like doesn't even matter. Danny, you're you know brave. Elaine, I'm gonna say I'm just gonna say like a, a Fayil type character. Mm. There's you, not a, a Fayil type character or Fayil? Fayil. I'm gonna cut Fayil. <laughs> okay, okay. There you go. There you go. Okay. Elaine and Fayil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really meandered to that answer. You it's know okay. what? It turns out Perrin and Fayil were already married and then she also, got killed in the Perrin. first like, episode. What, so. Other than like <laughs> I love what how you. I love how you cut. You cut Gandalf. I can't believe you're like Fayel's Gandalf, and now I'm cutting. Sometimes Gandalf, you just so. gotta do that. You know? <laughs> well, she thank you both. Coming she comes. She comes themselves. back later. She comes back later. It's okay. okay. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a cut bear lane. I'm actually okay with that. Yeah. I've um, cut bear lane. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah. So uh, thank you both for being here. This was a lot of fun. I, I, I love hearing about the experience and kind of going through it without necessarily always like looking at future plots and things that happen and just kind of focusing. What a great book. So much happens uh, and we barely scratched the stuff. We didn't, we didn't even talk about like half the things on my list to talk about. It's crazy. <laughs> we didn't, yeah, we really didn't talk about, oh, we didn't talk about the other Terangreal in Roydian uh, as far as Moraine is concerned. You know, we didn't talk about, um, yeah. we didn't really go into like Slayer and the Dream. Uh, we didn't really talk about... Uh, How about Bane and Chied and Gull being on the other side of the world when there's a breaking in the Threefold Land and they're <laughs> exactly. the only Aeol who don't have no idea what's happening. They don't yes. even know. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah there's, there's stuff that we didn't get to, but I hopefully all of you appreciated this. Thank you for showing up here live with us, everyone that's been in chat. And remember, after this, we do a live show in Discord. That's right, we go and do an after show. We just chat basically into the evening, uh, continuing conversations that have gone on here. So if you want to join us over there, you can. Again, the link to this is in Discord, uh, sorry, is in the description to Discord, and you can find us over there. And if you did win a question tonight, please make sure to contact me on Discord or through social media. We'll facilitate that, like I said, because we will be back here on June 17th with a live stream with Brandon Sanderson. I can't wait for that one. That's going to be a lot of fun. But do come back on Sunday. Sunday's episodes will be really unique. 
talking about trauma. It's a way that I have not really looked at the Wheel of Time before. And yeah, it's going to be really a, a serious conversation. Uh, don't expect the chat to be this lively, joking kind of place. Uh, I, we really want to have a serious conversation with fans about the trauma that these characters go through and uh, what that experience has been like as readers. Uh, so, yes, please uh, show up on Sunday if that is interesting to you. We'd love to have you part of that conversation. And then, again, we'll be back here on Wednesday as usual. So, well, thank you again. I always love having you both here. It's Thanks been a blast. For Looking yeah, forward. Us, well. Always, always such a blast. We love it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to the next time you're back and doing another new reader conversation. So with that, thank you all. And as we say around here, good night from the Dusty Wheel and smash to black. You went right to kill it. Look at you, you're all ready. You're just done. I mean, this is like, uh, this is really the well. Um, and now I'm like, great, my turn. <laughs> and if you don't like that, um, you want to say, well, Robert Jordan could have made the two rivers all white. He could have, but he gosh. didn't. So okay. Just complimented me so, on my dress, and as you can clearly see, I'm sad. I totally like call me as color. something along the lines of a Shida Haran analog. For the it does make sense why it outlasted the breaking. Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. You know, this is why I have saying. Therese in the show because she's gonna correct everything that. Hey, I'm everybody! Wrong welcome to the Dusty Will Show. What? Meme off challenge! Yay! Terrible, like baby face mounted on like a huge body. So like all <laughs> this of is a not sudden, just a like, traditional wow. fantasy, right? There, there are sci-fi. And elements just a moment ago, kind of uh, Rafe tweeted something. So let me get my guests in here with me, he and probably I would say get, put in. Talking. 70, 80% of the work. I got to be over the shoulder and be like, no.